Welcome back. Today I'll be talking about the brand new Olight Warrior X4 and comparing it to the Olight Warrior X3. Let's check it out. All right, this is everything the Olight Warrior X4 comes with. I'll give you a look at the box right here. Typical lumens and runtime info on the back. And this is an example of a holster I actually like. I like these molded holsters such as this. Snaps in very nicely. I like it. And this is interesting. It comes with a type A to type C charging cable. No magnetic tail charger here once again. So we'll talk about that a little bit later on in this video. Also comes with some safety information, your user manual, and of course the Olight Warrior X4. And it does come with this grip ring right here as well. But let me put all this off to the side here and give you guys a nice close up of the brand new Olight Warrior X4. And while you guys are checking this out, eh, right there, Let's talk about some of the features. All right, the Warrior X4 has a maximum output of 2,600 lumens, a maximum throw of 630 meters, and a max intensity of 99,310 candela. Now those are improvements over the Warrior X3's 2,500 lumens, 560 meters of throw, and 78,000 candela. And pushing out those 2,600 lumens is a cool white LED with a color temperature of about 5,700 to 6,700 Kelvin. It features two user modes, regular mode and tactical mode. Regular mode has two brightness levels and tactical mode has one brightness level and one special mode, that's strobe. And those modes are controlled with a magnetic stainless steel tail switch. Inside, there's a 3.6 volt, 5,000 milliamp hour, 21,700 rechargeable lithium ion battery that can be charged through the magnetic tail switch or its brand new USB type C charging port right on the body. It has a two meter impact resistance rating and is IPX8 waterproof. The X means the dust proofing wasn't tested and the eight means it's submersible in up to six feet of water. All right, let's talk dimensions. It has a length of 5.87 inches and a bezel diameter of 1.56 inches. And according to my weight test, it comes in at 8.8 .8 ounces. That's 250 grams. And yes, I did weigh it with the battery in it and the grip ring on it. So the Warrior X4 is Olight's latest addition in the Warrior X series, which in my opinion are some of the best tactical flashlights on the market. I've reviewed every single Warrior X flashlight that Olight's released. This is the previous model right here, the Olight Warrior X3. And I'll hold these up side by side so you can get an idea of some of the differences. Now you can see some differences right away with those heat dissipating fins right there near the head. And one of the biggest differences I noticed right away was just how much longer that stainless steel striking bezel was on the four versus the three. I mean, check that out. Look how much thicker that striking bezel is. It's crazy. But the crenellated bezel on the top here looks a lot less aggressive versus the previous model. Plus it's missing the window breaking beads right there. See that? So that's interesting. And I'll give you a look right down the barrel there and you can see that the Warrior X4 looks a lot wider in head diameter, but I think that's just because the striking bezel is a lot thinner over here because the overall width is just about the same, but that reflector looks a lot wider in the X4. And it's a lot easier to twist this bezel off. So I'm just gonna twist this off and show you just how thick that bezel is right there and how deep that reflector is. And while that reflector is removed, you get a nice look at that emitter inside there. Very cool. Now, one of the main changes is right there under those heat dissipating rings. That's a twist ring. And if I twist it open, it's going to reveal, as soon as I find it right there, the brand new USB Type-C charging port. Now, I mentioned I wanted to talk about this because this is the second flashlight in a row that didn't come with a magnetic charger. The first one I just reviewed was the Olight Baton 4. Now, granted, the Olight Baton 4 is charged in its charging case, but that charging case is charged via a USB Type-C cable. And the Warrior X4 specifically comes with a USB Type-C charging cable right here, not a magnetic charger. And that makes me wonder, is Olight ditching the magnetic chargers for the more common USB Type-C charging ports? That makes me wonder because why else would they give us a USB Type-C charging port on the body of their brand new Warrior X4 and not give us a magnetic charger here? Only time will tell, but I thought that was very interesting. And right next to that USB Type-C charging port is a boot up battery life indicator right there. 
And if I press and hold in that tail switch, you can see it glows green. That's because it's above 60%. This is a tri-color battery life indicator, green, orange, and red. And it also has that very familiar vibration feature. If you guys have any other Warrior X flashlights, you're gonna be familiar with that. When the battery life gets very low, it vibrates as soon as you turn it on. And I experienced that as soon as I turn this on straight out of the box. Now, as much as I appreciate finally having a battery life indicator on a Warrior X flashlight, um, you guys know I don't really like having them hidden under a twist cap like this. I have many flashlights that have hidden USB Type-C charging ports under a twist ring like this, which I think that's a good feature, but putting the battery life indicator under that, not the biggest fan. Only because I'm lazy and I don't wanna do that extra step just to see what my battery life is and close it back up. I know that's petty, I'm well aware, I still don't like it. But as I said, I am glad to see that they actually put a battery life indicator on a Warrior X flashlight. The three here had nothing and neither did any of the other previous Warrior X flashlights. I'm gonna take off this grip ring right here just so we can get a better look at this tail. And I'll show you the differences between the tails here, this is the four and this is the three. But the Warrior X4 has Olight's new flat tail switch right there. You can see this one is the previous model and this is the brand new flat design and I love this new design. They both can tail stand, but with this new flat design, their idea is if you get metal shavings on here, you can easily just wipe it off. And the last thing I wanted to mention, Olight got rid of the glow in the dark ring around the reflector here. And I know a lot of you guys didn't like that because having a glow in the dark ring around a tactical flashlight didn't really make sense. Because if you are using this in a tactical situation, anything glow in the dark is just gonna give away your location. But just so you guys know, they finally got rid of that. It might look like it has that glow in the dark ring around there, but that does not glow in the dark. And the last thing I wanted to show you here between the two, they look to be exactly the same length. Can see that right there. So I'll be putting these two up side by side when I go out and do the beam test a little bit later on in this video. But now let's talk about the lumens and runtime here. The Warrior X4 ships in regular mode. There's two modes, regular and tactical mode. In regular mode, there's two brightness levels, low and high. Low is 300 lumens, has a runtime of eight hours. And high is 2600 lumens, has a runtime of three minutes. Then steps down to 1000 lumens, has a runtime of 140 minutes and then steps down again to 300 lumens and has a runtime of 20 minutes. And now tactical mode has one brightness level and one special mode. The brightness level is medium. Medium is 1000 lumens, has a runtime of 150 minutes, and then steps down to 300 lumens and has a runtime of another 20 minutes. And strobe is the full 2600 lumens, that's great. All right, now let's go over the UI. Everything is controlled right here with the tail switch. To reach momentary low, just give it a half press and hold. There's your momentary silent low. Just let it go to turn it off and to reach momentary high. Full press and hold, there is your silent momentary high. To reach constant low, half press and let go quickly, there is your constant low. And then constant high is full press release quickly. Now that's easy enough. Now let's talk about how you switch the modes. So what you wanna do is turn the flashlight on and then twist the tail cap until it turns off Tighten it back up and now we're in tactical mode. Tactical mode is a half press medium and a full press strobe. And it still has momentary and constant medium or strobe. It all depends if you press and hold or press and let go very quickly. So it's a very simple UI, very easy to learn. But I just have one question. I'm wondering why Olight put medium in tactical mode instead of high in strobe. When I think tactical mode, I want instant access to high or turbo and instant access to a strobe. Instead, they put a thousand lumen medium here and strobe and then put high and low in regular mode. For me, I think it makes much more sense to put medium and low in regular mode and high and strobe in tactical mode. But regardless, it's very easy to switch everything around. Just turn it on, twist that tail cap, twist it back on, and there we go, we just switch modes. Now it's time for my not so scientific heat and turbo test. Here I let the flashlight run for about two minutes and I took its temperature at the head and the body after one minute and after two minutes. And after one minute, the head was about 124 degrees Fahrenheit and at the body was right around 92.7 degrees Fahrenheit. I tried to measure the temperature right in the middle of the head and the body. 
So after two minutes, the temperature rose at the head to 125 degrees Fahrenheit and 97.7 degrees Fahrenheit at the body. So overall, those temperatures aren't crazy. I've seen much worse, especially at the body. If you're running this flashlight on turbo for any amount of time, you're not gonna need gloves. And regarding the turbo step down, I'll put on the screen right now when turbo started stepping down and when it ended that step down. All right, let's do the beam test. I'm gonna start with the Warrior X4 right there on low, hitting that tree without a problem. And right there, you can see that deer in the headlights. Check them out. What's up, buddy? And those eyes are bright. I don't wanna blind them anymore, but let's move on to the barn over there. You can see I'm easily hitting that barn. And I'll throw up the distance between that barn, me and the barn and me and the tree like always. Pan across, say hello to Mr. Deer. So right away, you can see that color temperature, 57 to 6,700. It looks a little bit warmer than 67. So I'm guessing the flashlight that I have is more towards the 5,700 Kelvin. And very nice hot spot right there. Decent size. Scan across those trees right there. The outer perimeter is very, very crispy. And I was expecting that just based on the performance of the previous X3 that I have. And you're gonna see that in just a bit, but let's go to high right there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Very, very nice, as expected. Not a super floody beam. You can see that beam profile there is not extremely floody, but I am lighting up basically everything that I need right here. And 630 meters is pretty decent throw. I still wouldn't really consider this, you know, a super long thrower, but that 630 meters is no joke. You can see that right here easily hitting those trees in the background right there. And what I wanna do is bring out the X3 here before I show you the X4 medium mode. So I wanna start in low, this is the X3. And very, very similar beam profiles here. It's just gonna be slight differences in the lumen output, but there's gonna be a lot less throw here in the X3 a lot less candela on high. You're talking about 90, 99,000 plus versus 78,000 here. So this is low. And then let's go right to high. And it's still very decent. Look at that. But you can see that beam profile, the pattern right there is very similar in both. Very interesting. So I'm gonna put you down for a minute and I'm gonna go back to the X4 in medium mode. All right, I'm back and this is the X4 in medium mode. This is 1000 lumens. I keep saying medium mode, but I mean tactical mode with the brightness level of medium, 1000 lumens, just to give you guys an idea. And then strobe with a full press, I believe that's 13 Hertz. If I remember correctly, and I don't see they're alternating at all, but that's crazy. That's medium mode. So anyways, let's move on. Ooh, anyways, let's move on to the next location.
So the Warrior X3 and the Warrior X4 have very, very similar beam profiles. Obviously the Warrior X4 had a lot more throw. I'm not really sure if that came across on video as I saw it, but with the extra 100 lumens, 70 meters of throw and 21,310 candela, I definitely saw a difference here. Plus it has a few extra pros. First off, the brand new USB type C charging port. Finally, they give us a tri-colored battery life indicator, but unfortunately it's under this twist cap, which some of you guys might not mind that, but yeah, I'm not the biggest fan. The much thicker, but less aggressive striking bezel, but now no glow in the dark ring in there. And the dual user modes, regular and tactical mode, but I'm just wondering why they didn't give us high and strobe and tack mode and medium and low and regular mode. Olight is asking $129.99 for this, exactly the same price as the previous Olight Warrior X3. So is it worth an upgrade if you already own the Olight Warrior X3? In my opinion, not really. I mean, there's definitely improvements here, but not enough where I would say ditch your old Warrior X3 and you have to go out and buy this flashlight. But if you own anything previous to the Warrior X3, I would say yes, it's definitely worth an upgrade. Or if you don't have a Warrior X flashlight at all, it is definitely a solid choice if you guys have always wanted a Warrior X flashlight. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. What do you think? of the Olight Warrior X4. Now, if you wanna check this out for yourself, I will have links down below in my description box. But if you did enjoy this video, please give me that thumbs up. Please subscribe and go.